Hello, Mrs. Ferguson again. Today we're reading The Wolf's Chicken Stew by Kiko Kaza. And we had read another one, Ready for Anything. That's also on our videos here, same author. So let's see what this one's about. I love this author so much. I've read pretty much everything she's written, and uh, I love them all. Here we go. Wolf's Chicken Stew by Kiko Kaza. Here we go. There once lived a wolf who loved to eat more than anything, anything else in the world. As soon as he finished one meal, he began to think of the next. One day, the wolf got a terrible craving for chicken stew. All day long, he walked across the forest in search of a delicious chicken. Finally, he spotted one. Ah, she is just perfect for my stew, he thought. Look at how cute she is with her little scarf on. <laughs> the wolf crept closer, but just as he was about to grab his prey, I want you to notice prey, P-R-E-Y. That's something that they usually catch to eat. Well, he had another idea. If there was just some way to fatten this bird a little more, he thought, there would be all the more stew for me. Right. The wolf ran home to his kitchen, and he began to cook. <laughs> First he made a hundred scrumptious pancakes. Then late at night, he left them on the chicken's porch. Eat well, my pretty chicken, he cried. Get nice and fat for my stew. I don't think he's realizing that if he just ate those pancakes, that he would have plenty of food rather than all this effort to fatten up the chicken. But that's another train of thought. The next night, he brought a hundred scrumptious donuts. Eat well, my pretty chicken, he cried. Get nice and fat for my stew. <laughs> I'd take the donuts. And on the next night, he brought a scrumptious cake weighing a hundred pounds. <sighs> Eat well, my pretty chicken, he cried. Get nice and fat for my chicken stew. At last, all was ready. This was the night he had been waiting for. He put a large stew pot on the fire, and he set out joyfully to find his dinner. That chicken must be as fat as a balloon by now, he thought. Let's see. But as he peeked into the chicken's house, and we know it's a chicken's house because the door says, The door opened, and suddenly the chicken screeched, Oh, so it was you, Mr. Wolf. So cute in her little apron. Children, children, look! The pancakes and the donuts and that scrumptious cake. Oh, they weren't from Santa Claus. All those presents, they were from Uncle Wolf. The baby chicks jumped all over the wolf and gave him a hundred kisses. Oh, thank you, Uncle Wolf. You're the best cook in the world. Uncle Wolf didn't have chicken stew that night, but Mrs. Chicken fixed him a nice dinner anyway. Aw, shucks, he thought as he walked home. Maybe tomorrow I'll bake the little cricker critters a hundred scrumptious cookies. I got critters and cookies kind of smashed up into one word there. And so he did. <laughs> the end. Wolf's chicken stew. I love that one too. So cute. All those little babies. Uncle Wolf. All right. I hope you guys like that one as much as I do. And uh, that was a quick read. Hmm, what's next? I want an iguana. You have to find it to watch it. Over and out. <laughs>